Many of us are familiar with the impressive site of Corsham Court and its park, and the Methuen family name is well known. But perhaps less familiar is the history of this site, and who owned the estate before the Methuens arrived. How many generations of the family there have been in Corsham, and what their contributions have been to the town over the course of time. As for the history of the site, imagine yourself in the year 978, over a thousand years ago, in front of a summer palace used by the Saxon Wessex King Ethelred. Records from this year show that such a house stood here. We don't know what it looked like, but it could have been similar to this Saxon palace at Cheddar. Now fast forward nearly 600 years and the manor, the house at the time and its land, had been passed down through successive generations of royals. Until, that is, Elizabeth I chose to gift the manor to one of her favourites, Sir Christopher Hatton, who had first impressed her with his dancing. Hatton Way in Corsham is named after him. However, he soon became impoverished and was forced to sell the land after four years in 1582. We know from records that the manor house stood in ruins at that time. The buyer was one Thomas Smythe, the caution-born wealthy collector of customs duties for the Queen, who returned to his birthplace to build an impressive Tudor house to demonstrate his great wealth. This forms the core of the property to this day. And it is believed that where sections of his original house were later modernised, remnants still lie buried, waiting perhaps to be excavated in the future. The Smythe family sold Corsham House, as it was then known, in 1602 to Sir Edward Hungerford, whose wife financed the almshouses and schoolroom on Pound Pill, which can still be visited by the public. Corsham Court, as it was renamed, stayed with the Hungerfords until 1684, then passed through several hands before it was eventually bought by Sir Paul Methuen, shown here, for his cousin Paul Methuen in about 1745. This was the start of the Methuen family ownership of Corsham Court, which has lasted until today and makes the family the longest standing owners since the Crown. Sir Paul Methuen was a diplomat with a passion for art that has always played a part in the house. As a diplomat, he was posted throughout Europe and was able to view and purchase art from across the continent, not to be used as pretty decoration, but as a way to encourage thought. When Corsham Court was bought, the idea from the outset was to build a gallery to house his paintings. From the start, the younger Paul Methuen set about making some significant changes to the building. He'd made his fortune in the cloth industry in Bradford-on-Avon and was keen to set himself up as a gentleman and impress. He replaced and extended parts of the Tudor building, first with a more fashionable classical style and then using the famous architect and landscape gardener Lancelot Capability Brown to landscape the gardens and park and to build a long-awaited picture gallery to house Sir Paul's paintings. His son, Paul Cobb Methuen, MP, who inherited the family seat in 1795, then brought in the fashionable architect, John Nash, to add Gothic fairy tale style rooms to the building. Inspired by this famous Gothic extravaganza, the Strawberry Hill Villa in Twickenham. Nash's ideas might have been impressive, but his estimates for the building work were not. The initial estimate was over £5,500, but the final cost came to £25,500, which today would be well over £2 million. And because he was in such demand, Nash wasn't even available to supervise the work, resulting in disaster. The roof leaked, the Tudor foundations proved to be too weak to take the weight of the building, and then dry rot set in. The Methuen family sued Nash, Nash blamed the workmen, and just 40 years later, most of his building work had to be removed. It wasn't until 1846 that the north front of the house was finally rebuilt by Thomas Bellamy and has stood the test of time. You can still see some of Nash's design though, in the bathhouse shown here, in the turrets, oriel windows, and stables to name but a few. Also pictured is the dairy with its Gothic windows, which still houses weaving looms from the Bath Academy of Art. And the Cobb Methuens did leave a legacy for the town as well, which still stands today on Pickwick Road in Corsham. 
Lady Methuen's School for Girls was built for the education of poor children, known as Lady Methuen Scholars. Today, the building is still used for education and forms part of Wiltshire College. Cobb Methuen's heir, also Paul and also an MP, took over the family seat in 1816 and became the first Baron Methuen on account of his support for the Reform Bill in Parliament, which led to more equal representation. Back in caution, the Wiltshire Independent newspaper reported in 1845 that a cricket club was about to be formed in the town. Paul Methuen was patron of the club and he, and later the second and third Barons Methuen, served as presidents. And the cricket field at Pound Pill is still managed by the Caution estate. The Edwardian era certainly saw the influence and caution of the third Baron Field Marshal Paul Sanford Methuen, who took over the seat in 1891. He had fought in the Boer War in South Africa with Robert Baden Powell and later helped his friend set up the Scouts organisation. Locally, he founded the Caution Scout Group. He was also responsible for ensuring that not one but three fire stations were set up in Caution, perhaps because many buildings in Caution belonged to the Caution estate. Two of these fire stations were on Priory Street. Field Marshal Lord Methuen was also quick to act when World War I broke out in 1914. Just two days after war was declared, he called a meeting at Caution Town Hall so that the building could be used as a Red Cross hospital. His wife, Lady Christian Methuen, was appointed as the first Caution Hospital Commandant. In 1915, the Scots Guards, of whom Lord Methuen was Colonel-in-Chief, were stationed in Caution, and they practised trench digging and night attacks at the Batters near Pound Pill before they went off to the Western Front. Quite a different effect on the town was to be seen with the next owner of Caution Court, Paul Ashford Methuen, 4th Baron. He was a zoologist and artist who had carried out research into the anatomy of chameleons in South Africa. He turned down a professorship there due to his commitment to the family estate at Caution. There is even a species of South African lizard named after him, the Lycodactylus methueni. Returning to Britain, he worked for the Ministry of Agriculture, where his visits to slaughterhouses made him a lifelong vegetarian. He was also a serious artist and during the World War II was commissioned to paint as a war artist. He was transferred from his regiment to the Procurement and Fine Art branch, set up to protect works of art during the war. And after the war, the fourth Baron Methuen restored and expanded the art collection at Caution Court and, where possible, brought back paintings that had been sold by his father. His greatest influence on the town, however, must be his offer to house the Bath Academy of Art at Caution Court after it was destroyed in a bombing raid on Bath. For nearly 30 years, Caution saw bohemian art students and artists milling around the town, some living in local lodgings. Caution Court provided them not only with the space to paint and sculpt and weave, but also with hot lunches every day using food from the kitchen garden. His successor, the fifth Baron, Anthony Methuen, unfortunately died after only a year. The Methuen estate was faced with costly death duties at this time, and in 1980, the sixth Baron, Anthony John Methuen, paid a visit to the head teachers of the Priory Haywood School, now the Haywood Prep School, who wanted to buy their house. He managed to persuade them to also buy the Priory School building, along with its resident ghost, and so raised for funds for the Methuen estate. The Caution Civic Society describes how the sixth baron is remembered for drinking lunch in the Methuen Arms and walking back afterwards down the high street, greeting all the citizens by name and inviting some of them back to the court for another drink. The only heir to the Caution estate not to live there was the next baron, the seventh baron Robert Alexander Holt Methuen, who took the title in 1994. More serious than his predecessor, he was a working engineer, first for Westinghouse in Chippenham and then Rolls-Royce in Derbyshire. As he was about to retire, his brother died and he found himself becoming the seventh baron and a member of the House of Lords. He became a Liberal Democrat peer, a role that he took seriously. During this time, the Caution estate was managed by the heir apparent, James Methuen Campbell, 
a music critic and author who became the eighth Baron in 2014. Today, part of the house, including the picture gallery and library, is still open to the public to view, as are the gardens, and Bath Spa University runs its postgraduate courses there. What visitors won't see is the Roman coffin stored in the basement. James Matthew and Campbell has resisted the commercial approach seen in some other country houses and has managed to maintain the integrity of the estate as a whole. Happily, a 10-year programme of investment was secured for the conservation of Caution Park and the surrounding countryside, including the planting of 11,000 trees and the repair of 2,000 metres of dry stone wall to maintain the 18th century landscape for future generations. The aims of the owners of Caution Court might have evolved over the years, from wanting to change to wanting to preserve, but this historic estate manages to keep a constant and welcome presence in the town. There is so much more to know about the Corsham estate, and now that the Swindon and Wiltshire History Centre is open again in Chippenham, you can pay them a visit to see newspaper articles and photos relating to this and many other aspects of Corsham. Look out for our display in the library too, which also features a photo of the Roman coffin and its former skeleton.